The process of creating a raster elevation map for us begins with the Office of Geographic Information, or MassGIS, which is the state agency for Massachusetts that disseminates GIS information. So from their front web page, we want to go to the data layers link, and then MassGIS data layers, and then we'll arrive at the page that lists all of the data that they make available, which is actually quite long. What we're looking for are the digital terrain model files, or DTM files, and that's going to be found under physical resources. Click on physical resources, you're taking down the page, and specifically we're looking under elevation and derived products and digital terrain model files. We'll click on that link, and then we're presented with this metadata page that explains what the data is. So this is always important to take a look at so that you understand what you're dealing with. But essentially what we're going to get are text files that contain three columns of interest. Two columns will contain coordinate information for point locations, and the third will contain the elevation values. Now the thing with DTM files is that we have to identify the files that we need because the data is so large it's broken up into sheets or tiles for the entire state. So we're going to need to look at our OQ main mainland sheet IDs PDF file in order to determine which files we need. So for this example, we're going to be working with uh, this, the community of Marblehead in, on the North Shore of Massachusetts. And so that means that we need to zoom into the area and identify the, the quads that we need, or the, the um, tiles. So with the PDF uh, open, I'm going to zoom in to that area that corresponds with Marblehead. And we'll get a little closer to, so you can see it. And so this is Marblehead right here. And so you can see that Marblehead is actually split amongst at least four tiles. So what that means is that we need to acquire all of these tiles. The numbering system has a logical order to it, although it might not be apparent. Essentially, it starts in the lower left, and the numbers go up. And then you move over a column, and they go up. So we're going to need to copy these four numbers and then download just those files. The most efficient way to do this, I think, is to copy those numbers and then paste them into a text file so that you know what you're looking for. We're going to need to acquire all four of those, but let me just go after this first one to show you how this works, and then we'll jump ahead a bit. So I've acquired this number, which is what I'm going to need. Back in the web page, I'm going to go to the Download These Files link and I'm going to search for that particular number. All of them begin with a D. Whoops, let me go back here. Sometimes it switches to that table file view, which is really annoying. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're looking for that particular file number. They all are preceded by a D. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into here, and I've got my number, and I'm going to copy it. And then in the web page, I'm going to hit Control F on my keyboard. So I bring up the search menu, and I'm going to paste in that number, and it's going to jump straight to that number that I need. And so it's a zipped file, and I'm going to click on it, and it's going to initiate a download function. So I'm going to save this file. And so I want to save this in a place where I'm not going to lose it. So I already have a folder called Marblehead, which I've created, in which I'm going to place most of the data I'm going to work on here. So I'm going to navigate to that folder, which I've placed on my desktop, and I've called Marblehead. I'm going to save it there. And I'm going to do that for all four files that I need, and then I'm going to unzip them. OK, so I've downloaded the four files that I need, the four DTM files for Marblehead. Now I have four zipped files in my folder. And the first thing I need to do, of course, is unzip them. So in my case, I have 7-zip, which is a free program for unzipping, which I'm going to use. And so since I've already installed it, it allows me to right click and bring up a context menu, and then just simply extract the files here. You may have WinZip or another kind of unzipping utility. Whatever you're using, just make sure that you're extracting or unzipping the files into your folder so they're not still inside of the zipped file. And so what you should end up with are four files with DTM extensions and with the same number in front of them. We want to keep track of that number, too, because it helps us not to mix up the files that we have. So these DTM files are essentially just text files that have a series of numbers in them, coordinates as well as elevation values. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to edit them so that we, they're in a proper format we can bring them into ARC. And the simplest way to do that is to use Excel. So I'm going to open up Excel and I'm going to find those files. So opening up Excel I'm going to go to File and Open and I'm going to navigate to that folder that I've created that contains those DTM files. So in this case again it's my Marblehead folder and they're not visible immediately because you have to tell Excel to be able to, to see all the files that are available there. So now I can see them and I'm going to open them one at a time. So I'm going to open this one first and when I go to open it it's going to prompt me with this text import wizard because it's trying to figure out what is this data. So it should show WIC fixed width which is the correct uh, type of file that it is. Essentially there are columns of data but the only way that you know there's a column is a break is by the spaces in between them. And so you can follow the wizard through and it should drop in column separators between each of the columns and you should end up with at least five columns. The first two being coordinates, third being elevation and then you'll have these two other columns which we're going to end up getting rid of. So you can follow through the wizard and just hit finish and what you should end up with then is something that looks like this. Again, I've got five columns. The, three first, the first three columns are the ones that are most important and the ones that we're going to preserve. So what we need to do is we need to add column headings to those three columns so that ARC will know what they are. So I'm going to right click on that first row header right there and insert a new row and that will allow me to put in column headings. So the first one is going to be our X position. As it turns out it will be our easting. The second position is our Y or northing. right? And the last position is our Z value. Z usually indicating elevation values. The last two columns I don't really need. So I'm going to highlight them to both of them from the column headings and then I'm going to right click and then delete them. And all I need then is this data that's in here. And there's quite a bit in there. So again, the first column are our easting positions, northing positions, because data that comes from MassGIS is always in Massachusetts State Plain coordinate system. So I know that because it said it in the metadata. And the elevation values are meters above sea level. If you scroll down you'll see there's quite a few records in here. In fact this file has um, nearly 40,000 records. So they're pretty large. So we're going to resave this. But we're going to save it as an earlier Excel format. And the reason we're doing this is because uh, other formats that Excel can save into are kind of buggy and don't seem to, to work really well in ARC. So this is just something I've learned out of trial and error. Um, there's no reason that I can find out why. In any case, what we're looking for is to save it in the Excel 97 2003 workbook format. Not into, not this one, but this earlier one. Okay. Now, I would suggest that we save this using the same numbering system by which the files are actually known. That way we remember which is which. So what I'll typically do is going into, is rather than before I save it, I make note of the number. So this one is 253914. So I'm going to name it 253914. But again, making sure that I'm saving it in the proper format as an XLS file in that same folder. Okay. Once I've done that, I can close it and then I can open the other three files that I need to process, so you should do that. Once you've finished processing each of the four DTM files using Excel and saving them into the Excel 97 2003 format, you should end up with four new files in addition to the four DTM files uh, that have the data processed and ready to go into ARC. So before we go into ARC, make sure that you close down Excel entirely because ARC is a very jealous program. It doesn't like to work with files that other have been opened up recently or are open currently in another program. So I'm going to go into ARC and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a connection to the folder that contains all of my data. So my folder is on the desktop as I specified earlier and I called it Marblehead to make things simpler. And when I go into that folder, what I'm going to see is that I have uh, a number of files. I'm going to have the geodatabase that I created earlier and I'm also going to see the four Excel files noting by the XLS extension in my folder. Now the way this old Excel format works in ARC is that you open it to see the worksheets that are inside the workbook and those are what we can add into ARC. So I want to add each of those 
into arc and it'll come in as a table. Okay? So we'll do one at a time, bring them all in, and then we're going to, as soon as we bring them in, we're going to um, inspect them to make sure that they're working properly because a lot of things can go wrong uh, in this process because there's a lot of steps. So what we do to inspect them is we right click on each one and we open it and we're going to look at the format of the table and we make sure that it has headings and sometimes what I'll also do is I'll check to make sure that the columns are formatted in the proper data type uh, that we're going to need. So for example I right clicked on the Z value field and make sure that it shows me statistics and I do that simply to verify that it interpreted that column properly as uh, a numeric column uh, and not as an uh, or rather as a binary column not as an ASCII column. I can also see that um, there are a lot of records here about close to 40,000 which is consistent with what we noticed earlier when we looked at the same table in Excel. So again assuming that you you want to check each of the files in turn to make sure that they all have column headings and that the columns are formatted properly. All the columns should in fact be uh, numeric or rather binary uh, rather than ASCII.